We're looking at the two most practical laptops to put head to head in the two in one 16 inch category. The HP Spectre X360 16 inch model and the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Pro 360. So whether you're a graphic designer, digital artist, photographer, or video editor that wants to be a little more hands on with the use of a pen, these two laptops are just fantastic. And in this video, I wanna help you choose the correct one. So first and foremost, before we get any further, let's go ahead and check out the pricing of each of these two models to see which one might be a better fit for your budget and talking about the features. All right, now let's take a look at the pricing differences between the Spectre X360 and the Book 4. First and foremost, if we're gonna configure them the same way, which would be 16 gigs of RAM in the Intel Core Ultra 155H, with an OLED display, it's going to put us at $1349 for the X360. Now, I have it configured in this review with the RTX 4050 and 32 gigs of RAM. So keep in mind that this configuration is going to be $1659. But if we bump on over to BestBuy.com, you can see that this is currently retailing at $2199. So the best price as of this moment of filming this video is going to be at HP. So you're definitely gonna to wanna to check that out if you wanna get the RTX 4050 version of this laptop. Great, great price over at HP's website. Now, as you move over to the Samsung Galaxy Book Pro 360, you're gonna see this laptop at $1899. They definitely have it priced out as a more, you know, kind of premium laptop. Now you can also get pricing over at samsung.com. $18.99 currently, but make sure you go ahead and check out these Samsung offers. You can get education discounts, government, military, first responder, and if your company partners with Samsung, you can get special employee discounts. So I would definitely research that to see if you qualify for any of those discounts. And this, of course, will again be the Intel Core Ultra 7 and 16 gigs of RAM, which would match the base model of the Spectre X360. Now, if you want to create a comparable price point with the Spectre X360 and the RTX 4050 that I have that I'm currently reviewing in the video, this would be the Galaxy Book 4 Ultra, the Intel Core Ultra 7, and the RTX 4050, and that comes in at $23.99. So you can see that, yes, the Samsung is providing a bit more of some premium elements, and you'll see throughout the video when I talk about it, but really the deal that you're looking for, the best price point is honestly going to be the HP. Links are in the description if you're ready to make a purchase, and I really appreciate you all use those links. It keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Now, first and foremost, the thing that sticks out the most between these two laptops is definitely the thickness. You can see that the HP Spectre X360 is substantially thicker than the Galaxy Book 4 Pro 360. Now, the weight is a little bit lighter, I feel, from the, from the feel of it, on the Book 4 as well. So if you want a more slim, compact laptop, I would go with the Galaxy Book 4 Pro 360. Now, when we stack them on top of each other, you can see that the size, the form factor, is nearly the same. The Galaxy might be a tiny bit bigger as far as the height is concerned, if we stand the laptops up this way, you can see it kind of sticks up in the back here. There's going to be a slightly taller chassis when you open it up. Uh, but as far as the weight and thickness, the Book 4 is going to be a little bit lighter. Now going ahead and taking a look at the ports, Galaxy Book 4 versus the HP Spectre X360 16-inch model. HDMI, USB Type-C for the Galaxy Book, the USB Type-A for the Spectre. And on the other side, we have one USB Type-C and an HDMI for the Spectre and a headphone jack, USB Type-A and a micro SD card reader for the Book 4. However, we have some hidden ports here, one on this corner, which is a USB Type-C and one on the other corner, which is a headphone jack. So I would say as far as ports are concerned, I like the Book 4 ports a little bit better because of that micro SD card reader. It allows us to expand our storage very quickly. Now looking at the chassis design, they're both quite similar. They have aluminum chassis and the bottom covers fit into the side panels in very similar ways. You can see that on each of the laptops, it kind of lips in on the bottom cover where the side panel comes in and then the bottom cover fits nice and snug. You see that happens on both of the laptops. Bottom cover comes in, fits nice and snug. I'm gonna say that overall, this Book 4 feels a little bit more solid. You don't have as much press on the top cover as you do for the Spectre. So if you look, I'm pressing on the top cover on the Spectre versus the Book 4, very little press on the top cover. There's a little bit of hollowness here 
on the top cover of the Spectre. Now let's go ahead and open and close the lids with one hand. It takes a little bit to get each one going actually. So let's see that one, let's get that one going. There we go. So that opens and closes, pretty snug hinge. Now for the book four, once it releases, it opens up quickly, but the feet are rather slippery. Even on like a wood desk, the feet are still pretty slippery. That's one thing I noticed. Um, but if you look at the two screens here, this is one thing I really noticed as far as digital artists and designers are concerned, is look how bouncy the book four is compared to the Spectre. Like the book four kind of continues to bounce and it's also a little easier to move the screen. Now this is why I find this very, very important. So let's go ahead and open up these two laptops here. All right, now that we have the two laptops open, we have our pens, let's say we're drawing on the screen. Um, when I go ahead and I push on this screen, it doesn't move. If you see, the laptop actually starts to pick up before the screen even moves. If I go ahead and I push on this screen, it's very easy for the screen to fall over. So what that means is if I'm conducting digital art, I'm gonna have to have my hand here and I'm writing on the screen, I'm gonna have to hold the screen in order to, you know, like really if I wanna you know, push on the screen. With this, I don't have to hold the screen. I can use this free hand to go ahead, use shortcuts, and it really makes for a nice full user experience where I'm not having to steady the screen and then you know change one shortcut and then come back and Command Z. It's just a much more intuitive experience. So I would say overall, probably the best thing about the Spectre X360 is just the practicality of using the pen with the screen. It's just a much more intuitive experience. Um, now, if you go ahead and you flip this over, which both of them flip into tablet mode, you know, you can use the screen and press on it as hard as you want and it's not gonna go anywhere. But then again, when you flip over a laptop for specifically two and one laptops, it deactivates the keyboard and therefore you miss out on all your shortcuts anyway. So user experience, I go all the way credit towards the Spectre X360, phenomenal. Now, while we're discussing the screens, that's one area that the book four wins out by a hair. We have a really good brightness on both of the screens. We have over 400 nits of screen brightness. However, the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 comes with a 3K display at 100% sRGB, 97% Adobe RGB, and 99% TCI-P3 at a Delta E of 0.61. Where the Spectre X360 does not have a 3K display, however, it's 449 nits of screen brightness at 100% sRGB, 96% Adobe RGB, and 99% DCI-P3 at a Delta E of 1.11. So we're gonna get a little bit more color accuracy out of the Book 4, but a little bit more brightness out of the HP Spectre. So it really depends on what you're looking for. Now the bezels on each of the screens are a little bit different as well. You can see we have basically even bezeling on the top and the bottom of the Spectre, whereas we have a thin bezel on the top of the Samsung, but a thicker bezel along the bottom. So it just really depends on what you like to look at. Also, the Samsung has kind of these rounded edges along the corner of the bezel, where the HP Spectre has really nice 90 degree angles. So it really depends on your preferences of how you want your screen to appear. Let's now go ahead and take a look into the actual keyboard and trackpad. Very big difference here. We have a haptic trackpad, which means it senses your finger, make a click action and sends a vibration to simulate the trackpad depressing and clicking versus the book four with a manual trackpad. They're both very large. However, some are going to prefer the manual trackpad. My wife, for instance, cannot stand haptic trackpads. She has one on her MacBook Pro 14 and does not like it. However, she likes the MacBook Pro enough to accept that. I myself don't mind haptic trackpads. I think they're very nice because I feel like they will last longer because it's more software based that's sending the pulses rather than a manual button that could you know, just get weaker and depress over time. So for me personally, I do like the haptic trackpad. However, for the Samsung, it is a very nice click. Very soft, quiet, confident click. Um, it starts about two thirds down the trackpad where here you can click anywhere because it's haptic. It doesn't matter where you're clicking, but there's still a nice right and left click on the haptic trackpad. And of course, a good right and left click on the normal trackpad. So it really comes down to preference in that notion. Now, taking a look at the keyboards, we have a short key travel here, much more like an ultra book keyboard on the book four. And then we have a medium key press here on the Spectre. 
Definitely a different experience between these two laptops from the keyboard and trackpad standpoint. I'm gonna give you a quick audio sample so you can hear both of them in use, so you can hear what they sound like. Now, another thing to point out, of course, is we do have a numpad on the Book 4, we do not on the Spectre. Both have fingerprint readers, so you can log in quickly. Both have full-size shift keys. Um, the arrow keys are a little bit different. You can see we have big arrow keys on the left and right for the Spectre, and then the little arrow keys in the middle, where we just have little arrow keys for the Book 4. Now, one thing I really like about the Book 4 is you can quickly cycle through your performance modes by clicking Function and F11. You can see it changes the performance mode. Love that. If you want to change the performance mode, which I highly recommend you do on the Spectre, because if you do not change the My HP performance mode, you will get vastly different performance. When I went ahead and tested the export time using SmartSense versus performance mode, for the 4K export, it took about 2 minutes and 37 seconds, I think, on performance mode. It's a 9-minute 4K clip. On SmartSense, it took 22 minutes. So the performance mode definitely matters and definitely makes a big change on the HP Spectre. So keep that in mind. Now let's go ahead and quickly talk about the upgrade path. For the HP Spectre, there are no upgrade opportunities. You cannot upgrade the storage or the RAM. And that is also true of the Book 4. So keep in mind, if you're interested in upgrading this laptop, neither of them are going to be possible. I would look at a different model completely for both of them. I would look at something like the Asus Republic of Gamer Flow X16. That is a really great model that allows for upgrades and uh, but also comes with a dedicated GPU. So keep that in mind. Now, the next thing to take a look at is going to be battery life. We have an 83 watt hour battery in the Spectre X360 and we have a 76 watt hour battery in the Samsung Galaxy Book 4. However, we're gonna see better battery life out of the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 than we will out of the HP Spectre. Now, one of the biggest reasons is the model that I have of the Spectre X360, which is not required of every model, does have a dedicated GPU. It has the RTX 4050. You can get the Spectre X360 without a dedicated GPU and it will improve the battery life because you're not able to shut off the dedicated GPU using my HP. And so you're getting that advantage of no dedicated GPU having to be powered while you're running those battery life tests. So just keep that in mind that the battery life might be a little better if you were to match these two laptops spec for spec. They both do have the Intel Core Ultra 7 155H, but we have the addition of the RTX 4050 in the HP Spectre X360. Now, one of the great things about the HP Spectre X360 is the Poly Studio audio. Here's a quick sample of both the Book 4 and the HP Spectre X360 so you can hear what they sound like. And the speakers are great on the Spectre. Now, also one thing that will improve is the audio call quality. So let's say, you know, this, the, the microphone that is automatically embedded into the laptop, it's going to be better on the Spectre X360. Here's a sample of both, though, so you can judge for yourself which one you think is better. This is the webcam on the HP Spectre X360 16 inch from 2024 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. This is the webcam on the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Pro 360 from 2024 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. Now without further ado, let's get into the performance of these two laptops so you can see which one is right for your needs. Because like I said, you do have a dedicated GPU in the model I have for the Spectre X360. If you would want to get a dedicated GPU from a Samsung product, you would have to get the Galaxy Book 4 Ultra. And that comes with either an RTX 4050 or an RTX 4070, depending on the um, configuration you would like. So that's a whole separate review that I might be able to do 
if I eventually get a Galaxy Book 4 Ultra, which I have not yet in my studio, which is why for me, this was the most practical review at the time. Just keep an eye on the channel. First and foremost, looking at Geekbench single core and multi-core, you see that the Spectre and the Galaxy Book are really neck and neck for both single core and multi-core because they have the same processor. And that's something we'll see throughout R23 and Cinebench 2024. Now, where we're going to start to see a little bit of differences between these two laptops is going to be within Photoshop, but it's barely a different, just under a hundred points difference between the Spectre X360 and the Book 4. And actually it's the Book 4 that's taking the lead. I've been very impressed with the Book Pro 360 for the past two years. It has been the top performing Photoshop laptop for Ultrabooks that I have seen on my channel. So definitely one of my top picks if you're somebody interested in getting a great laptop for graphic design, digital art, or photography. Um, but of course the Spectre, like I showed you, was just right behind it. So it's also a fantastic pick. Now taking a look at video editing for playback, zero drop frames for 1080p for the book four, 4K full quality, 14 drop frames, and then 4K full quality on battery power, so that's having the charger unplugged, is 371. Now looking at the Spectre X360, you can see that the Premiere Pro drop frames, 1080p, zero drop frames, 4K full quality, zero drop frames, 4K on battery power only, 221, and then 6K, because I wanted to test it since it has a dedicated GPU, 5,177. So you could get away with some 6K video editing with the configuration I have of the Spectre X360 uh, because of that dedicated GPU. Now going ahead and looking at the 4K export times, you can see that we have a two minute and 37 second export out of the Spectre and then a four minute and 34 second export time out of the book four. Now, again, we're kind of cheating here because we have that dedicated GPU and we can't turn it off. So if we were going to compare these apples to apples, it would be around the four minute mark without the dedicated GPU for the Spectre. So just keep in mind there's that discrepancy because of the dedicated GPU. If I were going to be purchasing one of these laptops from a build quality standpoint, I would feel like I'm getting a more premium product by probably about 25% not a ton, just about 25% more premium with the Book 4. Just feels a little bit more rigid. There wasn't all that press on the top cover and the aluminum just feels a little bit nicer. That's just, again, perspective. It's not saying that they use a better material or they don't, just from the feel, that is my perception. However, I really do like the trackpad, the stiffer screen hinge, which allows me to really press on the screen with my pen and not push the screen down where I can then rest my hand at the trackpad or keyboard to access shortcuts when I'm working in Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, even Premiere Pro. And so really the whole user experience is absolutely phenomenal with the HP Spectre X360. Now, if I'm gonna talk about the flexibility of storage, I love that the micro SD card reader comes on the book four so I can expand my storage quickly by grabbing a micro SD card and put an extra 512 or one terabyte of storage, which would not be possible on the Spectre X360 since there is no upgrade path available for the storage. So flexibility and user experience, there are some differences between the two laptops. Again, like the upward facing speakers on the Spectre are fantastic. So really, I hope this review has just helped you quantify what you're looking for, ultimately helps you make the best purchasing decision for yourself. Links in the description if you are ready to make a purchase or click or tap the screen here for more videos to help you with your buying decision. I'll see you in the next one.